the telegram. How'd you like the movies, Linda? Features were passable. Two travelogues fair. The comedy wasn't too bad. That newsreel really sent me. I didn't think the newsreel was so much. <laughs> Stop pulling my leg. No, honestly, Eddie, nowadays they just give you too much. What time did we leave the house? Well, it was still daylight. I think we left the house around five. What time is it now? Midnight. But don't forget, we stopped and had dinner. I still think they give you too much. Yeah, but I kind of like that wide screen. Of course, it's still pretty fuzzy around the edges. That's what you said the first time. What first time? First time you saw Cinemascope. I've never seen Cinemascope before. You have to. Where? When? A month ago at the same theater. What was the picture? The Flight Beyond. Oh, yeah, you're right. I guess I did. I guess I just forgot. I haven't married you for seven years, I swear. You're the most forgetful man I know. I got more important things on my mind than Cinemascope from a month ago. Like what? Like being the chief purchasing agent for the Downey Air Motive Supply Company. I have to keep a lot of things in my noggin being the head of that all-important department. Well, if you can remember important facts and figures, why can't you remember simple little things around the house? Like what? Like remembering to buy a washer at the dime store to put in the kitchen sink faucet so it won't leak. So it leaks. Anyone drown yet? Or, like remembering the garbage goes out on Wednesday night and not Thursday night. Big deal, garbage. Like remembering to notify the gas company that the pilot light on our stove keeps going out, and if you don't get it fixed soon, I am going to buy a new stove. How about a gas mask? It's cheaper. Not so funny, Mr. Collins. Hmm. Hmm. What are you waiting for? Open the door. I get to bed. I'm so tired of hearing to fall asleep just leaning against this porch post. Well? You got your key, Linda? Where's yours? I forgot mine. I guess it's in my other coat. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There we are. Put mm. down the hall lights so and see where we're going. Mm-hmm. Glad it's Friday night. We can sleep a little late in the morning. What are you doing, Eddie? Someone left a note. They slipped it under the door. Well, don't bend over like that. Pick it up and read it. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll bet somebody dropped over to visit us. Wouldn't you know it? One night we picked to go to a movie, somebody comes over. Who was it, Eddie? The telegram. Telegram? Well, open it up and read it. I don't have it. You just said it was a telegram. Who was it from? I don't know. It's a notice. We got a telegram. Oh. Why did you say so in the first place? You didn't give me a chance. Where is the telegram? At the telegram office, I guess. Wouldn't you know it? What's that? Home all the time. We never get a telegram. The minute we step out, boom, telegram. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, real funny. I thought of something. Hmm? Can't you call the telegraph office, have them read it to you over the phone? Hey, that's right, you can. Well, close the door. Let's call them. Right. Say on that notice who the telegram is from, Eddie? Yeah. Western Union. No. I meant who sent it to us. Oh, well, no, it doesn't say. It just has our last name spelled in one of the blank spaces. <sighs> Probably from your brother Harry asking for some more money. Harry's doing very well since he went into business with the government. Eddie, your brother being drafted into the Army is not going into business with the United States government. Where's the phone book? Right under the phone. Well, let's look up the number of the telegraph office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Here. Here it is. Hey, that's interesting. What's interesting? Did you know that we only got one telegraph office in this town? Is that right? Yeah. Well, what's the number? Evergreen 57441. Evergreen 57441. What are you doing? I'm trying to memorize the number. What for? So I can dial it. The number is Evergreen 57441. Right. Hello? 
441. 441. One. They don't answer. Why? How should I know? Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. What are you doing? Counting the ring. What's wrong? 17 rings. They don't answer. Oh, that's funny. Let's call the operator. Why? Well, I know the phone company takes messages for the telegraph office. Maybe they receive them, too. Anyway, she'll know why they don't answer. Dial the operator. Wait. Just oh. Wait just a minute, Linda. Let's just forget it for tonight. I'll run down in the morning and pick up the telegram. What if it's something important? Important like what? Like I don't know what. Just something important. Call the operator. You call her yourself. I'm sleepy. I gotta go to bed. Operator. Uh, operator, I've been trying to get the telegraph office. Did you wish to send a telegram? No, no. We received a notice that we received a telegram. Only we called the telegraph office, but they don't answer. Is that possible? One moment. I'll check that for you. I thought you were going to bed. All right, so I'll wait for one little phone call. Losing that much sleep isn't going to make me or break me. The local telegraph office, ma'am, is closed until tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Thank you very much, operator. Well? Telegraph office is closed until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. You mean today? Tomorrow. Today is tomorrow. It's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. Let's go to bed, Linda. That's a good idea. Get that hedge tomorrow, Eddie. Hedge? What hedge? The hedge in the front yard. Where about? You promised me last week you were going to trim it this week. Did you forget? I already trimmed the hedge. Didn't I? Did you? I guess I remember. <sighs> Funny how on some nights a person just can't get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's my signal. What signal? I just yawned. What about well, it? Well, you know. Every time I'm ready to fall asleep, I give out with a big yawn. Since when? What do you mean, since when? Since when, the first time I found out about it. If you ask me, it's a signal for me to keep quiet. It's not a very subtle one. Yeah, have it your own way. Good night, honey. Good night, honey. Good night, honey. I wonder what's in that telegram. I wonder whether it's good news or bad news. Maybe it's good news for my brother Harry. Maybe he got a commission in the Army. Look, if your brother becomes an officer, it may be good news to him, but it'll be bad news for the rest of the country. Never mind. The telegram's probably not from my brother Harry anymore. Oh, well, who could it be from? Maybe it's from my boss, Mr. Downey. From your boss? Sure. Maybe it's about that raise I put in for you. Remember, Mr. Downey always sends a telegram or a special delivery letter of congratulations to the employees when he gives them a raise. Eddie, Eddie wouldn't that be wonderful if that's what that telegram's about? Your raise? It would be nothing short of sensational. Why, if, if you got that raise now, by next year we could save enough money to take that cross-country trip we always wanted to take. Hey, that's right. I never thought of that. New York, Chicago, and all points north, east, south, and west. All aboard! Here we come. Yeah. What's the matter? What is it? A telegram could be from your boss. But what if it's not about a raise? What else could it be about? They also 
send telegrams when they fire people, Eddie. Me fired? Why, that's ridiculous. I've been with Downey Air Motor for almost years. I'm indispensable. They'd never fire me, I don't think. Besides, what are we worrying about? We don't know what's in that telegram or even who it's from. Ah, uh, that's right, we don't. So, let's get to sleep. I'm tired. Good idea, I am too. Good night, Linda. Good night, Eddie. I just boiled some water for coffee. You know what time it is. Yeah, almost three o'clock. Oh, I can't sleep either. The telegram? Uh-huh. Me too. Sit down at the table. I'll fix your cup. Eddie. Hmm? What are you sniffing? You know what I'm sniffing. Gas. Escaping from the pilot light on the stove. The pilot light, which I have reminded you to get fixed for about the last Where's six the instant weeks. coffee jar? Up on the spice shelf by the stove. And if you don't get that pilot light fixed, I know. You're going to go out and buy a new stove. So I don't get blown up in the meantime. Hmm. You know, I've been giving that telegram some serious thinking. I listed about a dozen people it could be from or about. It does. Oh. I thought of at least 30. I eliminated all of them except one. Who? Uncle Albert. Uncle Albert? Yep. Well, why would Uncle Albert send us a telegram unless maybe he finally got married? I didn't mean that Uncle Albert sent us the telegram. I bet that is who the telegram's from. If you remember that the last time he came to visit us, that's all he talked about, getting married. I meant that maybe the telegram is about Uncle Albert. I hope if he got married, he married a nice girl and not some. What did you say, Eddie? I said maybe the telegram is about Uncle Albert. Oh, no. Not sweet, dear old Uncle Albert. Linda, let's face it. When your time comes, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. Yeah, but he was such a sweet, lovable, dear old man. That isn't what you said about him when he was here the last time. What did I say? You told me to be nice to the old coot because he was loaded with money. I never said any such thing, Eddie Sloan. And don't you dare say I Well, you did. implied as much. That's a big laugh. The very minute I told you Uncle Albert was rather wealthy, you kowtowed to him as if he were a, a sultan. Me interested in his money? Who rolled the carpet out on the front side? Well, the carpet happened to need airing. On the day he arrived? Who slipped pillows on the seats of the chairs every time he sat down? So I'm courteous, so I'm a good host. I always slip pillows on the seats for our guests. I never slip a pillow on a seat when I sit down. Some people need pillows and some don't. Well, that's what I call coming right out and saying what you think, Edward Oh, Sloan. honey, I was only making a joke. Sure, 3.30 in the morning making jokes at my expense. What else is there about me you'd like to criticize? How about the clothes I wear? How about my hair? How about my cooking? How about the way I iron your shirt? Linda, please. Go ahead. Make some more jokes. Look, if you're going to be so sensitive about every little thing I say, I'm just not going to say anything to Who you cares? anymore. Who cares? From now on, Eddie Sloan, you can talk to yourself or to the walls or find someone else to listen to your nasty remarks. Okay, okay. If you're going to be so sensitive, maybe I you will. You can start looking right now. Okay, okay. I right will. Now. Right now. Goodbye, Linda. Fine, wipe my gun. What's the matter? You want me to get arrested? What for? Letting me walk down the street in only my pajamas? That's indecent exposure. <laughs> oh. oh, Ed. They're crying out loud. <laughs> I guess it is pretty funny. Oh. Well, at least you had your slippers on. Pour yourself another cup of coffee. Must have been chilly out there. It was. Uh, now that's good. You hear that? Yeah. Someone knocking at the back door. Funny time of night for somebody to come visit me. Maybe it isn't a visitor, Eddie. 
think I ought to call the police? I don't know. 3.30 in the morning. Look, Linda, if it was somebody who was trying to burglarize us... <laughs> this would be the smart way of doing it. What do you mean? Knock on the door, make him think you're a friend, walk right in. Save the wear and tear of trying to break you. I never thought of that. Oh, neither did I. Until right now. The ability to talk on and on endlessly was long thought to belong to women exclusively. However, throughout our national history, certain senators in Congress have latched on to this ability as though they had invented it. Done in the Senate, it is called unlimited debate or filibuster. And there have been times when some senators have filibustered a bill to death. On occasion, just the threat of a filibuster would kill a bill. Critics of the filibuster argue that in a democratic country, a minority has no right to prevent action by a majority, and one senator could keep the entire Senate from important work as long as he just kept talking. Defenders of unlimited debate, however, argue that this talking marathon is protection against a minority being steamrollered by a hasty majority. In 1959, a change in rules was proposed and passed limiting debate to one hour per senator by the affirmative vote of two-thirds of the senators present on the floor. Some senators believe that this change resolves the filibuster controversy, while others insist the argument is far from dead. But the final settlement can only be made by them, the men you elect to the Senate of the United States, your representatives, those who speak for you, the voice of your government. shade down on the back door window. I think I can peek under the shade and see who it is. All right. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. It's Mr. Becker, our next door neighbor. Mm. Hi, Mr. Becker. Anything wrong? Huh? I happened to wake up, saw the light on in your kitchen, and wondered if there's anything wrong. Anyone sick? No, no, no. Linda and I couldn't sleep, so we just came down to the kitchen to have a cup of coffee. Oh. You sure there's nothing wrong? I'm positive. How about a cup of coffee? Uh, well, not to mention it. I guess I could go for a cup of coffee. Well, come on in. Thanks. Uh, hello, Mrs. Sloan. Oh, Mr. Becker. I happened to wake up, saw the light on here in your kitchen. Thought maybe something was... Hey. Don't I smell gas? You sure do. It's escaping from the pilot light on the stove. Something's wrong. It won't stay lit. Won't you get fixed? That's a good question. Did you hear Never Eddie? mind. What are you folks doing up at this hour? Oh, we just can't sleep. Got insomnia, huh? Get it very often? No. Oh, you're lucky. I used to know a fellow who had insomnia. Black? No, his name was Collins. He lived in Bridgeport. No, Georgia. no. I meant, do you want your coffee oh, black? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no. One blob of cream, one teaspoon full sugar level. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, this fellow Collins didn't sleep a wink for weeks. Is that right? Uh, except about your age, Mr. Sloan. Had a nice family, wife, two little children. Oh, had a good job. Everything was going real well. Oh, everybody in the neighborhood liked him. Oh, it was a pathetic case, all right. What happened? Well, I moved away. I never did find out. Here's your coffee. Uh oh. The reason we can't sleep, Mr. Becker, is because we got a notice, we got a telegram. We don't know what's in it. The notice was delivered to us last night while we were at a movie. We called the telegraph office, but it closes after midnight. Ooh, that's good coffee. Mm. Ah. Well, I never know about telegrams. Ten little words can change your whole life. I knew a fellow back in Bridgeport, Connecticut. He worked for one of the leading electrical supply companies for eight years. Eight years? Mm -hmm. One night out of a clear blue sky, they sent him a telegram that he was no longer needed. Boy, well, you know about that. Gee, that's an awful thing to do. Awful. No, 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 I'm wrong about that. He wasn't fired? Uh, he was with the company nine years. Well, I guess I better get back over to the house and get to bed. <laughs> oh, that was mighty delicious coffee. Good night, folks. Good night. Yeah, good night, Mr. Well, 
Almost four o'clock, Eddie. Let's get back up to bed. Linda? Yes? Linda, there's something I think I ought to tell you. What is it? Yesterday afternoon, I had a chat with Mr. Downey at the office. A chat? Well, it wasn't exactly a chat. It was more of a discussion. A discussion? Well, maybe it was an exchange of words. You mean an argument? Yeah, that's it. I, I couldn't think of it. Well, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to worry you. Then that telegram is from your boss. It is bad news. You're getting fired. We don't know. We don't know. Well, we're going to find out. How? And you're going to call your boss. When? Right now. At this hour. Don't be rude. Well, then I'll call him. Now, wait a minute, Linda. You'll be sensible about this sensible. thing. Well, I'm half out of my mind worrying about that telegram. Now, you get on that phone, Eddie Sloan, and call Mr. Downey. I'll not. Who can that be? Go over and open the door. I uh, just thought of something before. Oh, Mr. Becker. It's Mr. Becker. What is it? I got a thought. Pretty good one, I think. What is it? Uh, ain't got any more of that coffee left. Tasted pretty good. Was that regular interest? What was your thought, oh, Mr. Becker? Well, I, I think I found a way you can get hold of that telegram. The telegraph office was closed. I know. I know, but there's bound to be someone around the place. A janitor, a night watchman. Besides, the office is only ten blocks away from here. Get there in five minutes. Linda? We never thought of that. Five minutes. Hop in your car and be over there in five minutes. Linda? Back the car out. Mind if I ride along with you folks? Not at all. <laughs> it was my idea. <laughs> on the table. Maybe we should have worn our clothes instead of our pajamas. Huh? Oh, I forgot my glasses. Any lights on in the office? Uh, yeah. There's one on in the back room. Good. That must be the janitor, the night watchman. Knock on the door, Eddie. Yeah, right. Hmm. Anybody coming? No. I guess they can't hear us. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go around and back and knock. You folks stay right here in front. All right. Knock again. Yeah, all right. If there's somebody back there, they must be deaf. Try jiggling the door. Jiggling the door? Yes. Take the doorknob and jiggle oh, it. Oh, oh, I'll make them hear me if it's the last thing I ever do. Eddie. What? Stop jiggling. Why? Oh. Hi, officer. Nice morning. Is it? We... We, uh... Uh... We're just trying to get into the telegraph office. Officer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you were having a little trouble because the door is locked. Mm-hmm. You want to try it, officer? Maybe you can jiggle it open for us. Uh, no, thanks. Jack? Yeah. Got the old guy who's trying to break in in the rear. Good. I got the two in front. Let's take them down to the station. One of them is a mall. <laughs> oh, right. I thought we would never get home. That desk sergeant turned out to be a pretty nice guy after all. Oh, sure. It only took us three hours to convince him we weren't the pajama bandits. Do you realize we've been up all night, Eddie? Sure. Right now, I'm so sleepy. What about the telegram? Don't answer it. It's liable to be Mr. Beckett. I doubt it. He never comes out in the daylight. I'll get it. Telegram for Mr. and Mrs. E. Sloan. I'll take it. Sign here. There you are. Thank you. Linda! The telegram. It came. Quick. The, the open tel- it up. Open it up. Do you understand? Here, you do it. I'm too nervous. Well, well, well. Who's it from? Come on. Come on. What does it say? <laughs> Linda. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What is it? <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> Linda. Well, well. <laughs> Who's it from? Who's it from? <laughs> Linda. It's, it's, it's from the 
gas company. <laughs> the gas company? Yes. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> Dear Mr. and Mrs. Sloan, following Mr. Sloan's urgent telephone call to our office this Friday afternoon at 4.30 p.m., we immediately dispatched an emergency repairman to your home. Upon arrival, he found no one at the house. <laughs> Upon receipt of this telegram, please contact our office, and we will have the matter taken care of immediately. <laughs> by the <guest. laughs> How about that? Well, oh, my. I guess I owe you an apology, darling. You called the gas company. You did remember. Well, sort of, I guess. <laughs> now I won't have to buy a new stove. Do you want to call the gas company right now and have the repairman come out? Oh, not now, Linda. We're too sleepy. Come on. Let's go to bed. I'll call him Monday morning from the office. From the office? Yeah. If I don't forget. The Telegram, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in radio's foremost plays. <laughs> 